My name is Ian, and this is my big brother Aiden, and we're at South Woodby Elementary School here on beautiful Woodby Island in Langley, Washington. Today is January 14th, um, 2014, and it's very cold outside. Today we're at the school because we're going to be setting up a fish tank to raise coho salmon for all the elementary kids. <laughs> Part of the challenge in setting up an aquarium like this to hatch and grow young salmon is to make sure it matches the natural environment in terms of water temperature and quality. The chiller helps to cool the water in the aquarium. The thermostat helps maintain that cool temperature. The air bubblers add oxygen and a filtration system helps make sure that the water is clean. The team uses the combination of the chiller and the thermostat to maintain an optimal temperature in the aquarium of between 39 and 48 degrees Fahrenheit. The team will attempt to match the temperature of the water in the aquarium to that of the various streams where the young salmon will be released. This will give the salmon a better shot at survival in the wild. Once the various components of the aquarium have been assembled, it is time to fill the aquarium with water. It will take some time to achieve the proper temperature and to make sure the water is clean enough for the salmon to hatch and grow. Once the aquarium is full, it's time to add some gravel, check the equipment, and go get some salmon eggs. We're here at the Wallace River Hatchery in Sultan, and these are five representatives from the fifth grade classes at Southwood the Elementary and right now they're looking at the pools of fry at the Wallace River Hatchery and they're noticing the size and learning about what they are fed at this stage. Representing the fifth grade classes at South Whidbey Elementary are Brennan, Cooper, Aiden, Raven, and Kelly. This is Eric, and he's going to give us a tour of the Wallace River Hatchery. All right. So this here is May Creek. This uh, supplies us with our water for this side of the facility, our incubation room, and our 10 raceways that we have here. Uh, we also have this weir here, and we can trap our adults. Uh, we trap our uh, summer Chinook program and our coho program. Uh, coho is what you guys will be raising, the eggs that you guys will be getting. We spawn them down here, we collect the eggs and sperm, and then we take them to the incubation room over there, and that's where we do the fertilizing and, um, and laying the eggs down over there. And I can show you guys around the facility. Awesome. This is what we incubate our eggs in. Um, so we have this tray here, with a little water here. And then we have a tray sitting inside of that. Oops, sorry about that. So we put our eggs inside of here, and when we put them in this tray, the water circulates in such a way that it's like uh, water through the gravel. Kind of upwells underneath of them and kind of rolls them around. It gives them fresh, oxygenated water. A little dirty, might get a little wet. guys in the incubation room here. I have some eggs laid out for you. And we can, uh, maybe you'll be able to see the little eyes. You see the little eyeball in there? And you, you see a little white line? That's their, that's their spine. Kind of curved around inside of there. So this is the stage where we call them eyed up. You can see the little eyeballs. And then we know if they're a good egg or not. Because if they don't have any eyes, they're not a good egg. They probably didn't get fertilized. Oh. You see, they, they also have a pretty big in their belly. They still have a big yolk sac. So that means they don't need to eat food yet because they're still getting nutrition from that yolk sac. So what you'll want to do after your fish hatch is uh, when they're up and swimming up in, the, in your tank, every couple days maybe you can take a little scoop, put them in a jar, and pull them up. When you start seeing 
almost all of the fish in the jar are being completely closed. Um, we call it buttoned up. It's like a zipper. You know, it's nice and clean and closed. Then they're ready to start eating. Eric brings the students their own salmon eggs. There's about 250 of them in there, and it's time to get back to South Woodby Island and get them in the aquarium. So here we are. We are taking the salmon eggs and Raven, oh, the eyed eggs, there they are, and we are putting them into the salmon tank. So Raven's going to get a few. And then Kelly's going to drop hers. Yeah. And Cooper's going to put his in. There you go. And then as soon as Cooper's go in, we'll have Aiden. Yeah. Aiden and Brendan come a little closer. There you go. You're going to drop the eggs in to the tank. And there they go. Oh, I should be filming. Dropping. And then Brennan's. Just go ahead and maybe put the rest. Oh my god, I feel like little here. baby grapes. Yeah. It's creepy. Okay, we get a shot of your hand. Looks good. Okay, I'm dropping them in. There they are. In, the tank. in this still shot from inside the aquarium, you can see an alevin, or larval salmon, and an eyed up egg. Now that the eggs are hatching and the alevins are starting to move about, the aquarium will need to be monitored in order to determine the proper time to start feeding the fry. It takes the work of a lot of people to build a new generation of self-sustaining salmon birds, but the payoff will come when salmon are once again a beautiful and plentiful part of our ecosystem. Funded in large part by the South Whidbey Schools Foundation. Thank you.